Namaste, angels. It is now 12.06, so I guess, yeah. Um, it's the 25th, and this reading it begins today, the 25th, and goes through to March 3rd, Saturday, March 3rd. So on the Christian calendar, there's nothing that I'm probably going to discuss until the next one will be March 17th, St. Patrick's Day, followed by March 19th, the Feast of St. Joseph. Other than that, I don't think I'm going to do anything, not, not, not just Catholic, Christian, rather. Um, calendar because you know I go over um, when I do go over the Christian calendar it includes you know Protestant and Lutheran and Episcopal and Methodist and all that so I'm, I won't be doing any of those um, but on the Hebrew calendar we do have this week on the 28th February 28th uh, which is a Wednesday the fast of Esther so I'll explain what that is and on Thursday the first which is the next day the um, celebration of Purim so we'll talk about that. You know what? I'll do that first. I'll do that now. Um, for that, I'm going to go to Shabbat.org, www.chabad.org. And the Fast of Esther. Why, what, and how? The Fast of Esther is a dawn to nightfall fast held on the day before the jolly holiday of Purim. It commemorates the fasting of our ancestors in response to the dramatic chain of events that occurred during the exile in the Persian Empire. These events are recorded in the book of exile, in the book of <laughs> Esther rather, and the uh, salvation that came about at the time is celebrated on the holiday of Purim. This year, the fast of Esther is held on February 28th, uh, 2018, and Purim is celebrated from the evening of February 28th through March 1st, and in Jerusalem, it'll be March 1st through March 2nd. While the fast is generally celebrated on the day before Purim, when Purim is on a Sunday, the fast is moved from Shabbat, which means um, uh, the Sabbath, to the preceding Thursday. Because the Sabbath in the Jewish tradition is, is Friday, like from Friday evening after sundown. It begins in all day Saturday. Um, the fast of Esther, or Ta'anat Esther, is not one of the four public fasts that was ordained by the prophets. Consequently, we are more lenient in its observance, particularly when it comes to pregnant women, nursing mothers, and others who are weak. Fasting is associated with some pivotal moments in the Purim narrative. One such moment is when Esther approached King Aha Serusis without permission in an effort to intercede on behalf of the Jewish people. Before she went to the king, she fasted for three days and asked that all the Jews fast as well. Another dramatic turnaround occurred on Adar 13, which is the default date for the fast of Esther and the date that Haman had set aside for killing the Jews. Instead, the Jewish people soundly trounced their enemies. This triumph was accomplished while the Jews were fasting as they prayed to God that they be successful. So there are other prayers and things. I won't go over all of those because we have so much to talk about this week. Um, so I'm going to jump to Purim. And for that, I'll also uh, read from Shabbat.org. What is Purim? The Jolly Festival of Purim is celebrated every year on the 14th of the Hebrew month of Adar. And this is in late winter, early spring. It commemorates the salvation of the Jewish people in ancient Persia from Haman's plot to destroy, kill, and annihilate all Jews, young and old, infants and women in a single day. That was a quote, actually, from um, um, the Megillah in the, book of es in the book of Esther itself. The story in a nutshell. The Persian Empire of the 4th century BCE extended over 127 lands and all the Jews were its subjects. When King Ahasuerus had his wife, Queen Vashti, executed for failing to follow his orders, he arranged a beauty pageant to find a new queen. A Jewish girl, Esther, found favor in his eyes and became the new queen, though she refused to divulge her nationality. Meanwhile, the Jew-hating Haman was appointed prime minister of the empire. Mordecai, the leader of the Jews and Esther's cousin, defied the king's order and refused to bow to Haman. Haman was incensed and he convinced the king to issue a decree ordering the extermination of all the Jews on the 13th of Adar, a date chosen by a lottery Haman made. 
Mordecai galvanized all the Jews, convincing them to repent, fast, and to pray to God. Meanwhile, Esther asked the king and Haman to join her for a feast. At a subsequent feast, Esther revealed to the king her Jewish identity. Haman was hanged. Mordecai was appointed prime minister in his stead, and the new decree was issued, granting the Jews the right to defend themselves against their enemies. On the 13th of Adar, the Jews mobilized and killed many of their enemies. On the 14th of Adar, they rested and celebrated. In the capital city of Shushan, they took one more day to finish the job. Why is it called Purim? Purim means lots, L-O-T-S, in ancient Persian. The holiday was thus named since Haman had drawn lots to determine when he would carry out his diabolical scheme. You can pronounce this name many ways. In Eastern tradition, it is called Purim. Among Westerners, it is called Purim. Some Central European communities even call it Pirim or Pirim. But warning, calling this holiday Pyrim, as English speakers are sometimes accused of doing, is a surefire newbie cover blower. And then it goes on to describe some customs and observances attached to Purim if you want to read further on that. I'm going to keep moving because we also have on March 1st, not only Purim, you, you know, you notice that these um, Hebrew the way the Hebrew calendar is set up, it, it, it follows like the moon cycles and all of these things. So on the same day of Purim, it is um, the full moon, March 1st. So I'll talk about that real quick. Not in much depth because we'll have a separate moon reading. The next full moon will be on Thursday, March 1st. There are no full moons in February due to the two full moons in January and in March. The second full moon in March will occur on Saturday, March 31st, and will be a blue moon because it's the second full moon. That's what's going to make it a blue moon. The March 1st full moon is known as the worm moon. The March 31st full moon is typically known as the pink moon. Um, so that's that. And the sky this week... Going to www.astronomy.com for the sky this week. I'm going to begin with today, Sunday, February 25th. The dwarf planet Ceres reached opposition and peak visibility in late January, and it remains a fine sight this month. It currently shines at a magnitude of 7.3 and is an easy object to spot through binoculars. The largest member of the asteroid belt in the northern part of the constellation Cancer the Crab, which appears in the east once darkness falls and climbs nearly overhead around 10 p.m. local time. This evening, Ceres lies 0.8 degrees southwest of the magnitude 5.7 star Sigma 1, or Cancery. February 26th. Head outside before dawn and you can't miss Jupiter. The giant planet rises around midnight local time and climbs highest in the south as twilight commences. Jupiter shines at a magnitude of negative 2.1, which makes it the brightest point of light in the morning sky. And it resides among the much dimmer stars of the constellation Libra. A telescope reveals the planet's 39 inch diameter disk. Tuesday, February 27th, the variable star Algol in Perseus reaches minimum brightness at 6.54 p.m. EST when it shines at a magnitude of 3.4. If you start viewing as soon as darkness falls, you can watch it more than triple in brightness to a magnitude of 2.1 over the course of about five hours. This eclipsing binary star runs through a cycle from minimum to maximum and then back again every 2.87 days. Algol appears high in the west after the sunset and sinks slowly toward the northwestern horizon after midnight. The moon reaches perigee, the closest point in its orbit around Earth, at 9.39 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. 
Wednesday, February 28th, so the same day as the fast of Esther, Saturn rises more than three hours before the sun and climbs some 15 degrees high in the southeast by the time morning twilight begins. The ring planet shines at a magnitude of 0.6 among the fainter background stars Sagittarius the Archer. When viewed through a telescope, Saturn shows a 16-inch diameter disk surrounded by a stunning ring system that spans 36 inches and tilts 26 degrees to our line of sight. Thursday, March 1st, the same day as the full moon, the wolf, I mean, um, the worm moon and the feast of Purim. Full moon officially arrives at 7.51 p.m., Eastern Standard Time, but it looks completely illuminated all night. 7.51, of course, 13 or 4 or 11, 11. You can find it rising in the east at sunset and peaking in the south just after midnight local time. It dips low in the west by the time morning twilight begins. The moon spins the night among the background stars of Southern Leo, the lion. And the day, Thursday, March 1st, will be a six equals love. And it is a day of joy and love falling during the Hebrew month of joy and when Purim, the um, salvation of the Jewish people at the time, is celebrated. Friday, March 2nd. This is a good week to look for Sirius in the evening sky. The night sky's brightest star at a magnitude of negative 1.5 appears highest in the south shortly after twilight ends. It then lies about one third of the way from the horizon to the zenith when viewed from a mid-northern latitude. The farther south you live, the higher it appears. If you point binoculars at Sirius, look for the pretty star cluster M41 in the same field, just four degrees below the star. So a lot of fours or 13s or 11, 11s so far for this week. Saturday, March 3rd, the last day for which our reading is, after a long hiatus, both Mercury and Venus return to the evening sky in early March. The two neighbors lie low in the west during twilight and show up nicely through binoculars. Venus shines at a magnitude of negative 3.9 and stands five degrees high a half hour after sunset. Although Mercury appears just one-tenth as brilliant and bright at a magnitude of negative 1.2, that's still bright enough to see if you have a clear and unobstructed horizon. This evening, Mercury lies just 1.1 or 11 um, degrees to Venus's right, their closest approach during 2018. So they won't be any closer than they will be on Saturday any other time this year. Sunday, March 4th. March evenings offer an excellent chance to see the zodiacal light. From the Northern Hemisphere, late winter and early spring are great times to observe this elusive glow after sunset. It appears slightly fainter than in the Milky Way, so than the Milky Way, so you'll need a clear moonless sky and an observing site located far from the city. With the waning gibbous moon now exiting the early evening sky, this is the time to seek out the light. Excellent conditions continue through March 18th. Look for the cone-shaped glow, which has a broad base and points nearly straight up the western horizon after the last vestiges of twilight have faded away. Neptune lies in conjunction with the sun at 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. The distant planet is hopelessly lost in the solar glare, but will return to view before dawn in April. And with that, um, oh, I'll quickly go over the astrology because that was the astronomy. And then we'll get to our dice. Okay. I had to get a little cheat sheet so that I don't remember to, I don't <laughs> fail to remember to um, go over anything that has happened in um, February. So we have the solar eclipse um, that came with the new moon in Aquarius. I guess that was the last major thing. Um, as far as the new moon, we will be in that energy for at least two weeks. So we are still in it until the full moon, at least. Um, but as far as the eclipse, it was a partial eclipse of the sun. Eclipse energy tends to last for months, you know, realistically, not just a couple weeks. Um, I told you Venus entered Pisces on the 11th of February. Something else had happened on the 11th. Oh, it was um, Mary. Um, 
Our Lady of Lords, also the 11th. Um, there may have been something else on the 11th, but I don't recall what it was. On the 17th, Mercury joined Venus in Pisces. On the 18th, the Sun joined Mercury and Venus in Pisces. On the 19th, we officially um, began to recognize Pisceans, uh, people with Sun in Pisces. And Mars remains in Sagittarius. Um, Black Moon Lilith remains in Capricorn. Saturn and Pluto continue to approach retrograde. They are in shadow in Capricorn. Um, next week, we'll be talking about Mercury's retrograde. Um, I think that's it. All right, so let's do our dice. Okay, we're beginning with stay in bed and a whole bunch of light again. Beautiful. Um, stay in bed. Cocktail. And it's 50-50. I'm beginning to get used to Uriel joining us and his light. All right, so let's see. Spirit says, forget it. Still cocktail. And also still stay in bed. So it's like something that... I'm hearing like sleep on it, but then we got forget it also. So like, I think it's saying, you know, just go ahead and roll over and don't spend too much time on this, on this issue. Don't let it keep you up at night, you know, relax, chill out, whatever. Okay. So going to the cards, I'm beginning very nicely with the wheel of fortune, a time of positive change. The situation suddenly moves forward. Fortune is on your side. The Wheel of Fortune represents for me the planet Jupiter, um, which rules Sagittarius. So Sagittarians come into play or that energy comes into play. Light, youthful, fiery. Um, also the fixed signs, Scorpio, Leo, uh, Aquarius, and also Taurus. And of course, money and love. And speaking of Scorpio, opening to the king of water, who's trustworthy, compassionate, respected, and cultured. Open your heart and mind to those around you. Trustworthy and heartfelt advice and charity work, which as far as I'm concerned, is love. And just as fast as he came, it looks like Uriel is gone. All right. <laughs> king of water. And very nice. Wow. Opening to the ace of fire, an exciting new opportunity, career advancement, change your life. Now, as it relates to love, this could be the wand, you know, it could be physical, sexual. Um, the ace of fire, ace of wands is the like probably the most phallic card, um, in the traditional deck and opposite the king of water. This is about love motion. Um, perhaps, perhaps an actual male, um, but it doesn't have to be the king, you know, they're not gender specific and maybe an older person, maybe. Or very mature, which Scorpio could apply to that, that, you know, it's a fixed sign. Um, and that's like a more mature energy, let's say, as opposed to Pisces, which would be like Sagittarius or Gemini or Virgo, the youthful, the younger. King of water back and opening to the seven of fire. Defend your beliefs and decisions. Stand your ground. Choose your battles wisely. We don't fight every fight. We're going to walk away from some. It's, you know, you choose, whatever. Uh, king of water back. I'll go one more and it's the king of fire. Motivational, idealistic, ambitious, and charismatic. Focus, 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 and communicate with vision. Be a leader. Take advice from someone creative. This can represent anybody, the divine feminine, the divine masculine. Um, now again, not gender specific. However, in the tarot, the king of fire or the king of wands does represent the divine masculine. On the top of that, as a court card, it can be an actual person that's impactful upon your life. Um, it can be yourself, whether you are one of the zodiac signs to which it directly applies or not. It can be you taking on those, you know, traits, attributes of Leo, Sagittarius, Aries, or even Scorpio. Um, because Mars, the red planet, which also rules Aries is a ruler of Scorpio and Mars again, right now, as I just mentioned with the astronomy, 
um, and the astrology, Mars is in Sagittarius, another fire sign. And opposite the king of water can absolutely um, be connected again to Scorpio. Every card that we've seen thus far um, has linked to, you know, to Scorpio, if not others. King of water. I said that was going to be it, but I don't know. I was made to do this. And maybe because there's some fear in approaching so much, you know, wonderful energy. We've seen the ace of wands. We've seen the wheel of fortune. We've seen the king of water. So we got to be careful about falling back into like, I'm afraid to move on to such joy an illusion of being trapped, a lack of self-confidence and being afraid to take action. King of water. I'm going to cut. And we're back to the only other card um, that wasn't Major Arcana or a court card that we just saw, um, the Seven of Fire. So this may come into play. You may find yourself approached with, you know, drama, conflict or whatever. And some of it you may address and some of it you may say, you know what, fuck off and just walk away. Wow. Guess who's back as the overall energy is the king of water. Trustworthy, compassionate, respected and cultured. Open your heart and mind to those around you. Also, this card can be about trustworthy and heartfelt advice and or charity work. Charity work is to extend or to receive love without agenda, as far as I'm concerned. the masculines, the four of water, missing an opportunity, discontentment or boredom, open your eyes to the possibilities. So um, this can be maybe where that fear is coming into play, that eight of um, air or swords. Maybe he's afraid to like look up and look around him because he doesn't expect anything. You know, he doesn't think that good things are going to come his way. He lacks confidence. Uh, he lacks self-esteem. That can be. Maybe because he doesn't, he's afraid of the unknown. You know, he doesn't know. He's trying to have expectations, but he doesn't have anything on which to base them um, is what I'm getting. The moon represents the sign of Pisces specifically, but can be any water sign um, or just represent the need for us to pay attention to our intuition in a general sense and to be understanding of the fact that we don't know everything. We're not meant to know everything. The universe reveals um, what it wishes to show us when um, it feels that it's appropriate to show us. It's a very karmic energy. Important psychic insights. Events behind the scenes release the fears like the Eight of Swords that hold you back. And in the masculine subconscious, it's the queen of fire who's confident, warm, intelligent, and graceful. Stretch your wings and fly. Don't underestimate yourself, which it looks like he's doing. So this can apply to him, um, although it's the queen of fire. Search your independence and your creativity. The queen of fire is like the king that we just saw, a Leo, Sagittarius, or Aries, or maybe a Scorpio, um, and also the divine feminine of the tarot and can represent um, any zodiac sign and any gender. Crowning the feminine, very nice. Renewal with Archangel Jeremiah, which for me represents the planet Pluto and again, the sign of Scorpio, which Pluto rules. Review and evaluate a favorable assessment of the facts. It's time to move in a new direction. Uh, renewal for the purposes of a general reading is of course major arcana. So it's very quote unquote karmic energy as in of the universe destined, being doled out based on one's karma. Um, in a general sense, it's, it can be about like one's esteem and being overly judgmental on yourself or others. Um, as it relates to work, it 
tends to mean that you're in line for some sort of promotion or raise. And of course, it can mean that as it relates to ascension as well. And as above, so below, maybe you'll get a raise up there and then it will manifest down here as well. P raise, promotion, elevation, um, recognition, some sort. As it relates to relationships from, you know, friendship, platonic friendship to romantic, it means that we have come to a juncture, a crossroads, where we need to decide what, if anything, we're doing. So, like, are we going further down the path together or are we going to, you know, part ways or what's up here? Feminine is surrounded by the seven of fire. Defend your beliefs and decisions. Stand your ground. Choose your battles wisely. You can make a choice with regard to work or something. Maybe to take on a new position. Maybe somebody disagrees with you that you shouldn't, for example. And you can choose to listen to them. Or not. Maybe somebody in your family says, don't be in that relationship. Get out of that relationship because that's going to prevent you from keeping your job. You're going to have to, you know, quit your job in order to move to be closer to that person. You can allow that person to talk to you and agree with them or disagree with them or not listen to them at all. Walk away. That's what these two, you know, that's what this one means. And that's certainly what... Um, they can mean together. Feminine subconscious. It's the star. Happy times. Make positive, optimistic, long-term plans. You are on the right path. The star represents the sign of Aquarius and the planet Uranus for me. Um, and therefore, communication. Specifically electronic. This can be about online dating. Somebody can say, you sure you want to get into that? Or they can encourage you. And then that'll be up to you. Right. It can be having something to do with electronic communication um, and relationships or and elevation and you standing your ground and, you know, standing on a decision that you've come to. It can be about whether or not to email somebody. Should I contact them? No, you shouldn't. Or yes, you should. And then it's up to you to decide. Crowning the union, the emperor. This is about control. And I think um, this week it's, it's self-control. And again, making one's own decisions and standing their ground and, and not having anybody to deter them or change their mind. Organization and logic, structure and discipline and leadership. The emperor represents for me the planet Mars, which again is in Sagittarius. So that could be coming into play yet again. Um, but rules Aries and Scorpio. At the root, the three of water, a celebration, a wedding, a graduation, or a birth announcement, the need to have more fun. Um, I do feel that has something to do with the need to have more fun and that that it's, it's what's coming through with it being sort of bookend here by the queen of fire and the star. That there's a need to be more social and at least maybe to keep, catch up with friends and things online, social media, um, be creative, maybe on your web page or, or something. Um, social interaction, social media, that's definitely coming through. Uh, also, of course, as it relates to relationships, the three of water or any three can definitely be about a party of three um, and maybe specifically involving a water sign. And that can be what the unknowns are about, too, or the decision that you're making, whether or not to remain in a party of three, seeing a person that you know is attached or you're attached and you're seeing a person or something like that. Um, or to walk away from one. But again, you taking charge of your own life and deciding whatever that is for you with regard to your relationships and everything else. At the heart of the matter, the 10 of water and contented and rewarding family life. Your emotional and material needs are met and you have trustworthy relationships. So this would signify whatever your choice is, um, it being what's best for you and makes you happy. And this can be about celebrations too. Some of us may be actually celebrating the Feast of Purim, for example. You know, that may be part of our family tradition, maybe getting together or getting together for some other reason. I'm going to um, try to further clarify these with another emperor. So we're crowned, the union is crowned here by the emperor. And I'm beginning with another emperor in my animal tarot. Structure and organization are important right now. Don't be afraid to take on a leadership role 
as you have much wisdom to offer. So then again, this is about you being in control, maybe taking control of your own life and a leadership role. Like you're at the front lines in your own life and you know, you lead the way. You don't allow somebody else to, you know, have you follow them. You choose which way and what path on which you're going to stay. And opening to balance, which represents the sign of Sagittarius and is temperance in the traditional tarot. By merging varying points of view, you can generate an extraordinary new idea, compromise with others and collaborate to discover a better solution. Temperance um, for me is about restoration to wholeness, um, not just balance. I mean, it can be about juggling two things, but, but I think also opposite the emperor and about organization and getting things together. It's about being restored to wholeness. Um, you were, you know, maybe in pieces over something. You were spreading yourself too thin, maybe for work and trying to be a people pleaser. I got to please the family. I got to follow other people's decisions and not my own. I got to be social and keep a smile on my face, even though I'm very pessimistic right now and doubtful about my life and about myself. I lack confidence. You know, it's like putting a, putting a face on, as they say. And now I have on um, the emperor opposite the lovers, which represents the sign of Gemini. True and long lasting love finds its way into your life. Follow your heart with caring actions and choices. So this can be about relationships specifically between air and fire or air and water, and more specifically, Gemini and Aries, or Gemini and Scorpio. The Emperor. And the Four of Autumn. It's the perfect time to learn all you can by returning to school or taking a seminar or conducting research. Do your best work and the law of attraction will bring you prosperity and career advancement. And I'd say also relationship advancement. You know, you put the work in, that's what you're gonna, the aid of um, earth is about reaping what we've sown. I'm gonna cut on this note. Like um, with the seven, we planted the seeds and with the eight, we're actually reaping because we put in the work and stuff has grown and we're, picking it up. It belongs to us. Coming to the Prince of Winter or the Knight of Swords. Decisive, focused, driven, and impulsive is the Knight of Swords. He too may be a Gemini like the Lover's card or perhaps an Aquarius like the star here um, or even a Libra, which we don't have here yet um, or anybody of those traits or attributes. Get ready for progress and to speed up. This situation requires you to choose logic and intellect over emotions and to make your decisions quickly. Like you're not going to have much time. And the overall energy is the world. So again, could very well be about, um, walking away from perhaps, or making a decision to finally walk toward and to stick it out. Some party of three or somebody involved in a party of three with you. Congratulations on successfully accomplishing what you've set out to do. You've made it through the challenges and incorporated the lessons that life has offered you with grace and courage. This can be about leaving a job again, um, deciding upon a promotion or finally getting the promotion. Maybe it's been a long time coming. You haven't gotten the recognition that you do um, over here. Maybe you're finally going to be brought out of this energy of you know, boredom and doubt like this, you're getting the night of, of uh, swords in your life and then you're getting the world. So you're finally going to be moved out of this energy into some new, um, new and, and, and like newly born. So fresh energy for new starts and things like that. Atop the four of water is the chariot. You can successfully balance various and opposing energies at once through determination and focus. You've earned the rewards and recognition that you're getting and you're receiving. So we just talked about earning um, whatever the abundance is, like a raise, a promotion, an elevation with the energy of judgment. Uh, the chariot represents the sign of cancer, perhaps another water sign, and is about movement. So similar to the Knight of Swords, I said there's a sudden movement here and you get out of this funky energy that you've been stuck in um, that can, it can be attached to the world. It's about moving 
Somebody could be moving to a new home, although I haven't really felt any other evidence of that, but that's still possible too. Um, planes, trains, automobiles, for, you know, modes of transportation, modes of movement. It can be metaphorical movement. It can be about travel. You know, maybe you want to pick up and go someplace because you're so bored. I got to change. I got to change my own energy. I got to change my environment. And you, you take a trip atop the moon and some of the things that you don't know, the unknowns is the 10 of spring. So there is um, a, a situation that potentially brought stress and maybe even like the physical effects of stress, high blood pressure and addiction and things. Oh, there's a situation like that that's coming to an end. Um, it can also be where you've just been like working really hard and not getting enough rest, not taking a break. And that's coming to an end for you as well. Maybe you feel like you don't have a choice and you have to keep pushing. But what you don't know is that soon you won't have to do that anymore. Here atop the queen of fire. This is why. So maybe there is moving. Because again, the, the masculine's crowned by the chariot. And now here at the root is the four of spring, which can absolutely be about a new home. Uh, maybe moving in together with the queen of fire, or maybe moving into a relationship, moving toward commitment. Maybe that's what's reason for, reason for celebration because it will then be sitting here next to um, the three of water, which is about celebration. It's time to kick back and to relax and to celebrate all that you have. Joy arises from success in your career, the completion of a project, or a very happy home life. It can be about a relationship too, even marriage. Somebody could be getting married. And again, moving into um, together more specifically, probably. Here, a top renewal, which I said represented Pluto and Scorpio for me, is the Prince of Summer or Prince of Cups, Knight of Cups, which can absolutely be Scorpio um, or perhaps Pisces or Cancer or anybody of these traits or attributes. It can just represent the energy in general of love and proposal, okay? Uh, a deeply emotional and probably romantic experience will sweep you off your feet. Things can move very quickly during such a whirlwind encounter. So stay balanced and make decisions with both your heart and your intellect. So deciding where do we go from here? Somebody wants to move on, you know, toward, continue to move toward love. And that could be the, what your decision is. The top, the seven of fire, the 10 of winter. So you're standing your ground and you have good reason to like the difficulties you've been having, they're about to come to an end. You've made it through. So why not, you know, why cease to stand your ground now? Absolutely power um, on through to the end. It's the end of a career path. So I talked about that too. Somebody could be leaving a job um, with this sitting here underneath judgment that it co coincides with this end of a career path, end of a job, end of a project, end of a relationship. Um, and that brings feelings that are mixed, right? Both of joy and sadness, relief and disappointment. Put aside your fears about these changes, right? Fear of the unknown. Let go of that. We have a 10 mirroring the masculine's 10 here. 10 of winter here or swords. 10 of spring or wands here. Uh, release all that and trust that there's, you know, it gets better. When this 10 turns into a one, it gets better. When it turns into an ace, brighter future ahead. And in the feminine subconscious, we actually did have a progression um, from this nine of spring to the masculine's 10 of spring. You've worked hard and what you've created is impressive and worthy of protecting annoying challenges. Like I said, the drama that may come up, that may arise, that can be the annoying challenges or people, nosy people getting in your business, trying to tell you what to do. That can be the challenges that come up. But again, they're coming to an end. They may come up as they usually do, but don't worry, you'll handle them as you usually do. And, you know, the universe is on your side with this, because again, this is the top of the star, which is about prayers being answered, wishes being granted. Maybe you said, Lord, please help me with these fools. I can't take them anymore. And that's what's happening. All right. Um, prayers answered, wishes granted, dreams coming true. Crowning the union atop the emperor, the seven of winter, somebody wanting to steal your joy. And it crosses with the seven of wands and the seven um, and then the 10 of winter. But we see with, with the um, moves that we make, if we keep powering forward, this can't affect us. They can't steal our joy. All right. And sometimes it's about the need, the desire to physically steal something. Somebody could be trying to steal that um, raise or promotion here, steal your like control 
take the control that you have over yourself. Take that. This can also be about distrust between people, but I would think that it's um, not warranted. And it can be about low self-esteem and confidence too, like stealing from ourselves, stealing the um, possibility of a good thing from ourselves, like denying ourselves by our own ego and fear and pride and worry, right? Caution will help you to avoid the loss of valuables, including non-material resources such as time or peace of mind. Be aware of the results of your actions as well as what others might be doing behind your back. So again, remember it crosses this seven of wands, which is the other potent, the potential other nosy people and stuff. And be, so be aware of that here at the root atop the print, the three of water is the Prince of spring or Knight of wands. And he sits here next to the four of wands and the queen of wands. So again, somebody could be married, moving in with another person, um, you know, they're beloved or something doing something that brings them joy and that they want to celebrate. An opportunity arises that needs your attention right away. Moving quickly is important, yet there's something you can't handle. There's nothing you can't handle rather, uh, if you follow your inner guidance, like the moon, which it crosses guides us to do. It says, pay attention to your intuition and release the fears that are holding you back. That's what the moon is about. At the heart of the matter here atop the 10 of water, the ace of autumn. Here's your brand new star. You can expect a windfall of abundance, such as money, timely assistance, a serendipitous meeting or rewarding advice. Maybe a new job again, maybe a new relationship, the end of difficulty, the end of difficulty, moving to a new home, getting married, getting engaged, right? These, this is <laughs> this um, line here, the four of wands, the 10 of cups, and the Prince of Cups in, in a row with the Ace of Autumn in the middle. I mean, you can't beat that with a stick. All right. Um, you may be offered a fabulous new job or promotion um, or the prospect of a profitable bu business venture or an investment. Okay. Or a relationship, a beautiful new relationship, perhaps with an earth sign, a Capricorn, a Virgo, or Taurus, but not necessarily. I think it can also be about just a, a relationship that is so um, worth it, so worth it, so valuable. So it will be so abundant to you, so long lasting um, and full of love. Lastly, I wanted to get some advice from the healing to help with our temperance energy, our balance and our restoral to wholeness, beginning with throat chakra. The angels are helping you to lovingly speak your truth and opening to past life issue. This situation has a basis in one of your previous lifetimes. Ask your angels to help you to remember, release, learn and heal from your past experiences. And you may want to specifically ask Archangel Jeremiah because he is the Archangel, the patron of past lives. For the throat chakra, if you want to work with an angel, you may want to talk to Gabriel. All right, in communication in the throat, Gabriel. Past life issue and opening to integrity. Align your actions so that they match your values and your inner knowingness of what's right for you. Integrity. That has to do with like the ego and the pride and stuff that I talked about here. And opening to indigo. The person you're inquiring about is an indigo, meaning a highly sensitive natural born leader talked about the leader here with the queen of wands, also the king of wands before and here again, crowning, um, the emperor. So this indigo person that we're talking about can be the masculine, the feminine, both. Maybe you're inquiring about yourself. You're wondering, can I trust this person that again can be what the seven of winter is about? Can I trust this person? Can I trust her or him? She or he, can I trust him or her? 
Can I trust myself with them? Indigo. Cards say you can. Very nice. The overall energy is twin flame. The answer to your question involves a spiritually based romantic relationship. Masculine sacral chakra is what you may want to work on this week. You are a highly sensitive being and you're sensitive to chemicals, additives, processed foods, and energies right now. Respect your sensitivities by avoiding harsh items, situations, and relationships. So that could be what moving is about, like moving on, moving away from this disappointment and lack and boredom. Like you're just in this situation or friendship or romantic relationship or at this dead end job, like just for the sake of it, because you haven't moved on because you're afraid of the unknown. So you're taking on this stress. You continue to take on this stress in a situation that makes you miserable just for that reason. I'd rather be in stuck in here in this situation that brings me down than venture out, you know, onto something new. So now you're getting the energy to move and you'll, you'll be victorious if you follow the guidance that's given to you. And also maybe perhaps work on your sacral chakra. Feminine, singing and dancing, express yourself and awaken your psychic senses through the magic power of music and movement. I say, if you get an opportunity to go dancing, you should do it. Remember, we're supposed to be more social this week if we can. From the angels to the masculine, the page of fire, outgoing, creative, confident, and mischievous. And the pages bring news. This is news of an exciting new endeavor, maybe a new job, a new home, a new relationship with all these beautiful cards surrounding you, like the chariot, the four of wands, the ace of autumn. Use your originality and ingenuity in making the best of this situation and going after your passions. Feminine for us. It's the eight of fire. Events are moving at a fast pace. Delays are over. Many things are happening at once. This can also be about communication and maybe again, specifically via an electronic means or online means, social media, online dating, something like that. And lastly, from the animal tarot to the masculine, here is more um, potential conflict, drama that will attempt to come your way. Don't allow it to get you down with all this really awesome energy that surrounds you. Occasionally, you may experience clashes with others. If you decide the matter is worth your energy, then do what you can to minimize the conflict without sacrificing your own goals or beliefs. So maintain your integrity is what this is saying. This can also be about your just raw, passion, aggressive, um, masculine self too. Maybe taking on this energy of the emperor and just like taking the reins, um, of your own life back and you you're you're this ram you know like bucking the world basically that can be you and oh lastly for the feminine to go along with the twin flame card and the knight of cups and the four of wands is the two of spring or two of wands which is the divine union or quote-unquote twin flame card of the tarot um, as it relates to general energies about we've got two stakes in the ground twos are about faith and we're gonna have to believe that the rest is going to come true too. That soon we're going to have three stakes in the ground and then four, we're going to have a solid foundation if we keep it up, if we stay on path and don't manifest continued difficulty in our life. Acknowledge that we understand that the difficulty is ending and look forward to positivity and let, you know, let this difficulty actually dissipate. Don't hold on to it. That's, that's what faith is. Your vision, creativity, and dedication to your cause have brought you great success. In fact, it may be in your best interest to get a partner to assist you in your endeavors or to expand the number of people helping you. This can absolutely be about moving in um, with perhaps your beloved masculine, um, this two of spring, or, or vice versa, feminine, with the two of us um, here moving in together. I hope that you guys have enjoyed the general reading. I will be back with love and the moon. Namaste, angels. Mafia won't touch the ground.